So we're effectively what is now about three weeks, just over three weeks into the the, the soft lockdown that we've got here in this country. I've got my uh, my quarantine haircut. I'm used to uh, getting my haircut every two weeks, so I've not had a haircut like this for about 10, 11 years from back when I was in the forces. Um, gym's been closed for three weeks due to government guidelines. So therefore I've been coaching everyone online since. Uh, as you've just seen in the footage, got some meat on the smoker. Uh, we've got a rump roast, which is due to be done in about four hours. And using that meter wrap that you saw a moment ago, uh, it's pretty cool, really. I can leave that running, disappear to wherever I want to get to, and still be able to access the internal and ambient temperature of the smoker. So keep an eye on that, which is really awesome. You can just make out behind me that we've gone for a walk with a little fella. I'm gonna get some exercise later, I'm gonna train. Take you guys with me and show you some ideas of how to train uh, out, outdoors at home with minimal equipment. Uh, but first, just taking the, the little fella, which you might be able to make out over my shoulder for a bit of a walk and get some exercise. <laughs> We're actually really fortunate as the back of where we live uh, there's quite a, a significant wooded area a very sort of small forest so we've been managing to get out what is effectively maybe almost every day every other day with a baby which is good um, we've been so grateful for the weather because we've been able to get outside in the back garden and, and entertain him uh, I'm able to work from the back garden uh, Gemma, she's able to do some work in the back garden whilst the baby's allowed to kind of roam the garden freely and play in his trampoline and stuff. So very, very grateful for the good weather. Um, Work-wise, again, managed to cope pretty well, to be honest, despite having no access to the guys that I, uh, I'm currently working with. Um, fortunately, I've been coaching people all over the world remotely for what effectively is the last maybe eight or nine years. So... Thankfully, I'm quite familiar with working people of, of a distance and not being able to have access to them face to face. So I've had no issues there in terms of being able to uh, to coach them. If anything, I've been giving them a lot more of my time because uh, online coaching is much more time consuming than what is working with people individually. So I've been managing to spend some time on things like our monthly recipe book, which went out at the beginning of April and currently working on the recipe book for the end of this month going into May. I've been filming what is effectively around 115, 120 exercise videos because uh, obviously I've been very fortunate to work with people in uh, training facilities and centers. Um, I obviously have my own gym, Cheshire Barbell, so I've never necessarily had the need to work with people whilst they've trained at home. So I very quickly had to build a, a significant catalog of no equipment based exercises so you'll notice that the vlog has been pretty quiet for about two and a half to three weeks now and that's quite simply because i've put all of my time filming editing exporting publishing all of the home programs and, and exercises that have uh, no equipment plyometric ballistic change of direction strength etc etc at least 120 videos or thereabouts have been added to the YouTube channel, which I'm sure you'll have already seen if you follow this and subscribe to this channel already. Um, so yeah, I've just not been able to put any time toward the vlog at all. So this is the first one. I intend to do them much more regularly now. Now I've got that database of exercises all set and organized and, and, and laid out. Um, yeah, I mean, <sighs> those are the people that I work with and like I'm, I'm working with everybody online at the moment. I'm still writing programs as normal people are in fact if anything having to do more because lack of access to the tennis court means that the general physical activity levels have, have dropped by at least double so it's been quite good from a physical point of view really it's been a, a, an enormous opportunity for some people to get in a lot more physical training volume um, than, than what they normally would because they're spending a lot less time or, or no time at all on the tennis court uh, so that's been really good um, in addition to writing people's programs, I ask everybody to record videos of themselves actually doing the training programs that I prescribe. And what that means is that they then send me those videos and I then analyze them 
do a, a voice recording, provide feedback, annotate, draw, etc. Export those videos and then send them back to give them some advice, some help, just to help them get more out of their training. Uh, so yeah, it's been very time consuming. I've certainly been kept busy, uh, very long days doing tons of work um, and it's been good. I mean, you know, if, if anything, it's just like, it's just like the old times, apart from the fact that I'm not in a gym, I'm coaching everybody as normal. So it's been pretty handy. Um, I have actually had a couple of people come on board because they've lacked the structure because they're completely out of their comfort zone now where they don't have access to the equipment that they normally would. I've had a couple of aspiring professional tennis players actually come on board uh, to get my help, to help them just sort of structure and lay out their training uh, with whatever equipment that they've got access to at home. So one thing I'd definitely say about this period is that it's an absolute ideal opportunity to work on your weaknesses. You know, if there's any area of your physical development that has suffered over the previous maybe 12 months due to competing so regularly, uh, say for example, it might have been pre-existing ankle injuries or knee problems or maybe maybe back pain or, or shoulder issues this is an ideal time to work on those things i'm not necessarily suggesting that people have got more time because i understand that particularly those with sort of responsibilities at home whether that be uh, at work or even looking after kids or, or, or whatever it might be i understand that just because people aren't necessarily allowed to work or, or, or play tennis for example um, it doesn't necessarily mean that people have more time however we can all make time, we can all put half an hour to an hour of time into our physical development, reducing the risk of injury. One thing, there's probably two actually, two significant changes that I've made to a lot of uh, my players' programs. One of that is that we're doing a lot more dynamic, explosive, plyometric work, agility, change of direction, for a number of reasons really. Um, one, they're not doing as much movement and footwork based stuff on court because they're not playing tennis. Two, it doesn't require equipment at all. And I think everybody, everybody needs to be working on their plyometric ability and change of direction. It's actually the body's lack of ability to absorb force and reduce ground contact time that actually causes a lot of problems with related to injury. So I think that's really important. Um, secondly, and another big change, is really low intensity aerobic conditioning. Now, I, I'm, I must specify that I'm not referring to intervals. Um, I'm a fan of intervals. I like fitness work in that sense. Uh, I do not like intervals in the form of running because I think that the way in which that people run naturally through intervals is, is actually creates a lot of bad practice and bad habits with regards to acceleration mechanics. Um, the way you run, when you're performing intervals is mechanically very, very different to acceleration and change of direction work. So I might make a separate video on this topic and actually explain it in a lot more detail, but I am not a fan of running intervals whatsoever. What I am a fan of is very, very, very low intensity aerobic conditioning work. Now, aerobic fitness for tennis players is incredibly important for the ability to recover between points, between sets, even between days, between matches. Aerobic fitness is incredibly important. And I don't think enough time gets spent on this because I understand that aspiring pros and, and pros alike just spend so much time on the tennis court, there isn't much time left to go out on a, a two, three hour run, for example. Um, I think that very long runs, particularly that that are very low intensity, of that low intensity that you don't develop bad habits from a running perspective. It's a, it's a polarized approach, I suppose I would say. And, and, and the way in which I'm a, uh, an advocate of the way of tennis players training is that you should work at incredibly low intensities, incredibly high intensities, but not very much in the middle. Those, those running intervals I've just mentioned. So um, another reason is spending less time on court means just time you're spending a lot less time on your feet. You're moving around less. Your, your joints aren't getting as much volume, as much load going through them. So I think it's so important that we do some long conditioning, really easy runs to help develop or even maintain aerobic fitness, but just to make sure that we're not gonna return back after all of this with any significant overuse or repetitive strain injuries. Because if you go from doing very little to a lot again, once all this returns to normal, you're gonna experience some problems. So keep on top of the long runs you know, a couple times, maybe two, three times a week, some really long two, three hour steady state jogs that low enough intensity that your heart rate is kind of around 120, 130 beats per minute-ish. Thank
Daddy Tiger. <laughs> So yeah, as a bit of a recap, my advice during this time, during this period would be to increase your exposure, your volume, your overall commitment to developing plyometric and ballistic ability. You can vary, if not increase the intensity through velocity, through speed, through effort, through the complexity of movements, and you don't need any equipment at all. I think plyometrics and ballistic movement change of direction is an incredibly important part of the sport that everybody should be focusing on. Um, secondly to that, increase your overall exposure and volume to really low intensity, steady state, long duration conditioning. And I'm not referring to running intervals, I'm referring to really super easy jogs. Things that sort of last anywhere between 90 minutes and maybe three hours. Keep an intensity, if you have access to a heart rate monitor, I said around about 120 to 130 beats per minute. Um, again, I would minimize if not completely negate any running interval type work at all. I would keep all of your interval and conditioning type work toward change of direction, court based movements. If you've watched any of my recent videos that I've recently uploaded over the, the last couple of weeks, you'll see that if you measure out the space of 8.2 meters by about 5.5 meters, or approximately 11 steps by around seven, you can measure out the, 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 the layout, the space that makes up the, uh, the, the tennis court, or at least the area between the baseline and the service box, and you can perform your intervals on there. But yeah, I'm gonna make some specific videos over the coming days uh, and weeks about this sort of stuff. I'm gonna get back to the walk, I'm gonna turn you guys off. I'll touch base with you guys later once I've uh, sort of sorted the, the meat out, the tea for tonight, the rump roast, and then I'm going to take you guys with me on a training session to help go through some ideas that you can train at home outside with minimal equipment. whether you can tell from that footage but the rump roast is absolutely amazing perfect it's been in for about four hours i'm just going to transfer it over to the igloo cooler box now just to let it rest for a couple of hours so this is the point quick change i'm just going to go out and head to the nearest park i'm going to take you guys with me my intention is to give you a couple of ideas as how you can get out the house and get some physical activity done, do some strength training, some body weight, some calisthenics type work. So particularly for those of you who don't have any equipment at home, it's always nice to get out the house, get out the same four walls. So I'm just gonna head out for a run, find a couple of objects along the way. Let's see what we can find and give you some ideas. <laughs> So I'm running past what I think is the old Stanley Oaks abandoned high school. And there's absolutely tons of objects around here that we can use for a variety of calisthenic exercises. I found a metal barrier that's surrounding some form of pipe work as a bit of a protection from vehicles. And I'm just gonna use that to do some rear foot elevated split squats, which are an absolutely incredible exercise to be able to develop mobility in the hips and strength in the glutes and the quads. <laughs> Now, if you have a fair amount of training experience, you've got tons of experience doing plyometrics and ballistic type exercises, then one thing I do recommend that you keep on top of is plyometrics. When you're outdoors, all you need is an elevated surface, maybe about shin height, knee height there or thereabouts. Step off and try and minimize ground contact time. <laughs> Of 
course, a lot of public places will have a series of bike racks, bike locks available. These are absolutely incredible to be able to do a variety of different exercises, including inverted rows, variations of leg raises, even press up variations and dips. <laughs> You also probably won't need to look that far to find some form of pull-up bar. Of course, lunges are amongst one of the best lower body leg exercises, not just for developing strength, but also for improving mobility, similar to the split squats you saw earlier. Now, obviously you might not be able to add resistance in this circumstance, so what you could do is find a large area, such as a football pitch or a car park, and quite simply increase the volume by lunging the entire length and back. Those of you that have been following this channel for a little bit of time now will realize that I'm a huge fan of pistol squats. One of the limitations that a lot of people tend to have with pistols is that they either lack sufficient ankle mobility or hip mobility. Finding a wall in the outdoors is a really good solution because it does help keep the hanging leg nice and straight below you as opposed to having to put it out in front. Having it below you rather than in front allows you to minimize if not reduce that posterior tilt and therefore keep your spine that little bit more neutral that a lot of people tend to struggle with. So I am a big fan of box jumps, however in my opinion most people use box jumps incorrectly. The height of the box is not there for you to test your ability to jump high. The height of the box is there to minimise the height that you're going to fall and hit the ground. It's a way of minimising eccentric force in the muscle and therefore minimising muscle soreness. So it's a really good thing to use in season when you're competing regularly. For this reason you don't need to find a step or a box or some form of surface to jump on that's significantly high, provided that you can jump up and over the top and land on top of the surface, that height is absolutely fine. So box jumps are a really good exercise for developing explosive hip and knee extension. do come across a set of steps and they're certainly too low, let's say less than mid shin, then you can do this variation that I'm about to show you now. They're certainly not plyometric, they're definitely ballistic. In comparison to box jumps and those depth jumps I showed you earlier, the stretch shortening cycle is much longer and slower, so this is going to be an exercise to develop more single leg power as opposed to plyometric ability. So I hope this video gives you absolutely tons of suggestions of the things that you should be doing over the next few weeks whilst there's a little bit of a quarantine lockdown going on. There's absolutely loads of options. There's a home workout series playlist that I've put together on my YouTube channel, which I'm gradually building over time. As said earlier, there's about 120 videos on there. So everybody that I work with is certainly not short of a few ideas. You don't need much equipment, there's plenty to do. Again, as I said earlier, focus on very low intensity conditioning work, focus on plyometric ballistic and change of direction work, and in addition, throw in some calisthenics, which because they're controlled and nice and slow, they're a great thing to do to help minimize and reduce injury risk. Now that I've built a pretty decent catalog on the exercise library for those that I'm working with, you're probably gonna be seeing a lot more of me over the coming weeks. I'll be putting a lot more time into these vlog type videos. So if you wanna see more, make sure you hit the like button below as well as the subscribe button next to that and the bell icon so you get notified of our next release.